Hi, this is Mike Peterson from Challenge Island, Oakland County East, back with another one of our Steamtastic Fridays. Today we're in the middle of our Steam B series, and today we're going to talk about the A in Steam, which stands for art. So, so in that arts and crafts kind of idea, we're going to build something today that actually helps the bees in the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little nest for what we call mason bees. So mason bees are a little bit different than honey bees. They don't actually make honey, but they serve a very important function in the insect world. So they still do the other important job that bees do where they spread pollen around, and they're actually really good at it. Some people say they're even better than honey bees at it. For example, if you have just 250 or 300 female bees, they can pollinate an entire acre of apples or cherries or some other fruit like that. So it's really important to have some of those mason bees around. The other nice thing about mason bees is they're native to North America, to where we're making this video, and there's about 150 different kinds of them. So in most parts of the country, there's some kind of mason bee around that you might be able to help out a little bit. So what we can do to, to make a nest for our mason bees, first, first let's talk a little bit about why they need a nest. So mason bees, like any other bees, need to be born and they grow out of eggs. So every February or March or so, the female bees start laying the eggs to make the next bed generation of, of the mason bees. So when they do that, they need a long tunnel to, to make, those, make space for those bees. So just to show you, here's, here's a picture of what a mason bee looks like. So pretty much like a regular bee. And here's an example of what they look like when they're working in their tunnels to get ready for that next generation of bees. So when they, once they find a, a good tunnel they can use, there's three different layers of things they have to put into it. So they start out by making some mud. So they put some mud in the very back of the tunnel. The second step is to go collect some nectar. So they'll go to a few hundred flowers and collect a bunch of nectar, stick that into the tunnel. Once they've got some nectar in there, then they'll lay an egg on top of the nectar. So the reason they lay the egg on the nectar is so that when the egg hatches, that little tiny larva is going to be hungry, then it can eat some of that nectar, so until it can get out of the tunnel. So, so the female bee puts in mud, nectar, and an egg. Once she does that, then she puts some more mud in, makes a new layer with nectar and egg, and just keeps doing that until she runs out of space in her tunnel. So the best length of tunnel is about six inches long or so. So the reason why is because she's trying to make more new female bees and male bees, and that's about the right length. So we end up with a little more female bees than we get male bees. And the female ones are the ones that are really good at pollinating and spreading that nectar around. So we wanna get more female bees if we can. So let's take a look at how we can make a little nest to help our mason bee friends out. So what we would need to do that is a can which is about six inches tall. So if you get, for example, a big soup can, that's about the right height for that. The other thing we'll need are some paper straws to make our tunnels. So that the best size of tunnel is about five sixteenths of an inch or so. So as you can find those online, if you order those, or if you look in the right kind of stores, should be able to find them about that size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so we, we clean out the can, of course, so clean it out really good, because the bees probably don't like soup too well. And once you get it cleaned out, then we need to fill it up with those straws. So what we would do is we take some of our paper straws and be sure they're paper. If they're plastic, they won't work so good either. That's not quite as natural. So what we need to do is we need to cut our straws so they're just the right length so that they'll, they'll sit in the right height of the can. So for example, this one I need to cut off about here. So then we just keep cutting those straws off until we have enough straws to fill in our can. So I cut that one off. So then if so I'd, we filled this a little bit ahead of time. Once we're all done, it'll look something like this. So, so we want to fill it in pretty good in there so it's pretty full. So we have as many tunnels as possible for our mason bees. So once we've got that filled up, then we need to hang it up. So again, we would want to do this in about February or March or so, about the time of year we're making this video today. So a couple, couple of hints on where to put it. So we needed some place where it gets some sun because the bees definitely like to stay warm in the sun. So some place where the can kind of looks either to the east or to the south are the two best directions for that because that's where the sun will shine on it in the morning and warm up the, the home for the bees. So I want to do that. 
We also want it to be about three or four feet high above the ground. So that way it stays nice and dry. It doesn't get muddy and dirty from the wetness of the ground. Plus that's kind of a fun height so we can look at it and check it out to see if the bees are forming in there or not. And then we, we need to attach it so it doesn't move. So, so we don't want it like hanging off of a, a rope or something like that. So you'd want to attach it onto like a fence or the side of a tree or something like that so it's nice and sturdy and holds still there. So if we get it all hung up there, so go ahead and hang it up and then you just watch. So, so if you've got it in a good spot where the bees can stay warm, if there's some flowers nearby so the bees can get some nectar, that's really helpful too. So just keep an eye on it from February till about June or so. And eventually, if you're getting some mason bees to call it a home, you'll start to see some mud start to form on the end of those straws. And that means that the bees have filled that up with those layers of the mud, the nectar, and the eggs, so that there's some eggs ready to form new bees in there. So about June or July or so, once, once you see that mud on the outside, you can go ahead and take it down. Then you'll want to put it someplace kind of cool and dark. So actually like a garage is really nice. An unheated garage works just fine. And just keep it in there for the rest of the year. So, so you can put that in there for the winter to kind of keep the bee eggs safe. And then next year in about February, March or so, bring it back out, put it back up wherever you had it. And then those, those adult bees will be ready to start coming out of those straws so that they can go out and start pollinating and doing their work in the world. So it takes a long process, but the first fun step is to get that nest made, get it hung up, then start watching. See if you can get some mud and get some mason bees to call your yard a home. And then you can start, start making that happen. So all right, with that, I hope you have a lot of fun making your mason bee nest, and thank you for joining us today. Have a good week.